Hello, welcome to this virtual organic chemistry lab. Today, we're going to do a chemically active extraction, one of the most useful and common techniques that organic chemists do every single day. Our goal in this experiment is to take this mixture right here. So you see that mixture? Looks kind of gross, looks kind of nasty. That mixture contains an organic acid and an organic, what we're going to call neutral compound. So one compound is acidic, which means it can be deprotonated in a base. And the other compound, what we call the neutral compound, will not have its uh, solubility affected in the presence of acid or in the presence of base. It does not have any protons that can be easily removed or any um, heteroatoms that could easily be protonated. In today's laboratory procedure, we're going to separate these two compounds by a series of steps. The first thing we're going to do is the extraction of the acidic compound, and this is all the glassware we're gonna to need to accomplish that task. We're gonna need a little vial to save some of this original mixture for the TLC lab that we will do uh, in a, uh, next week. But um, we're gonna need a 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, a separatory funnel, a 150 milliliter beaker, and then two graduated cylinders, one 50 milliliter and one 10 milliliter. For the isolation of the organic acid part of the lab, we're going to need a Buchner funnel, pH paper, a uh, filter adapter right here, and a filter flask. So the filter flask looks like the Erlenmeyer flask, but it has this little arm coming out of it. You're also gonna need one of these little bowls. Uh, that's going to be what we use for our ice bath. And then finally, for the isolation, the, the isolation of the neutral component, we're gonna need this set of glassware right here, a stirring rod, a 50 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, 100, 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, a teared, nice teared, make sure you don't forget to tear it, uh, round bottom flask, and a, uh, a funnel. So this is all of the glassware we're gonna to need to do today's experiment. Now we are ready to begin here. Uh, this wood thing is a, is a stand that allows the separatory funnel to sit here. Uh, you might also have a ring stand, but this is what we use here for this lab. And uh, that's there. Make sure it's good and stable and make sure it's on a vertical post. Uh, down here, this is the beaker that we're going to be using for our uh, sodium hydroxide extract in our first extraction operation of this procedure. And it's a good idea to label your glassware. I already have this one labeled as uh, original mixture. When you're doing an extraction, and I've done thousands and thousands of extractions over the years, well, it's easy to forget which uh, solution is in which flask. It's, it's easy to like say, oh, I'll, I'll remember what, what's in there. And then uh, an hour later, you forget where the different parts of the extraction uh, procedure are. So always uh, label your glass where you can't uh, over label. Just make sure that you, you do that. Uh, it'll, it'll save you a lot of time in the long run. Now here I have 40 milliliters of ethyl acetate, which is the solvent that we're going to be using, the organic solvent uh, that we're gonna use for this procedure. And I also have a, a funnel. I did not show the funnel in the first, uh, when I had all the glassware laid out, but it's a good idea to, to use a funnel to get all of this material into the separatory funnel. So the first thing we're gonna do is take this unknown mixture, take all of this material and get it down into this original mixture Erlenmeyer uh, flask. The way we're going to do that is transfer it with the ethyl acetate solution. So all of this material should dissolve in this amount of ethyl acetate. So we'll pour a little bit in so fill up that vial. You'll see that not everything will dissolve you're gonna have some powder potentially left behind, but that's okay. We're just gonna dump that into this Erlenmeyer flask right here.
I take a couple rounds. So it's really important that we don't dump all of the solvent in. We want to get uh, at once. We want to do it stepwise, 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 because you can see there's still a little bit of uh, material on here. We want to get all of that solution down. I'm trying to avoid getting the solvent on the cap, but we can we can just do a quick one here on the cap. I think that's just about all of it. You'll see, you might see a little bit of crust on the outside. Uh, here we have a little bit of the material fell down on the outside of the glass. Uh, that's just going to be considered uh, lost. All right, we're going to just end up uh, not really worrying about that. We're going to just set that off to the side of the fume hood, okay? Let that dry out. The ethyl acetate will evaporate slowly, the, the few drops that are in there. I didn't show you this, but before we started, I took a mass of this uh, vial, including the cap. Uh, and so that original mass minus the mass after we let that solvent evaporate, uh, don't forget to use the cap as well in your, in your calculation. That will give you this mass by difference, uh, by using this mass by different technique, that will uh, let you know exactly how much material was originally in that vial. So we weigh it before we begin, and then we're going to weigh it after it dries, but don't forget to weigh it with the cap after it dries. All right. Now we still have about 12 or so milliliters of um, ethyl acetate in here. Let's get all of that now into this Erlenmeyer flask. And now you can see this original mixture um, is entirely dissolved in ethyl acetate. So both compounds, the acidic compound and what we call the neutral compound, fully dissolved in here. Through the chemically active extraction, we're going to be able to separate them. We want to make sure we do not forget something. In a subsequent lab, the next lab, we're going to do the TLC, so thin layer chromatography. Let's take about one milliliter out of this solution for the TLC lab that comes next. You don't have to be really careful in your measurement. About one milliliter, about that much. We're gonna cap that vial and set that off to the side, put it in your drawer until next week. Okay, now we have to transfer this original mixture into uh, this separatory funnel. Let's talk about the separatory funnel really quickly before we begin. This right here is called a stopcock. When the bar is horizontal, that means it is closed. When the bar is vertical, it's open and whatever is up here will flow down. If you begin your procedure by pouring your uh, material into here, it's all just going to flow out the bottom. As I mentioned before, I've done thousands of extractions in my career so far, and probably about eight times, maybe more than I'd like to admit, maybe more like 18 times, I've dumped a solution into the top of the separatory funnel, and it all fell out onto the fume hood uh, base because I didn't have anything underneath. That's a very sad situation when that happens. Um, so make sure whenever you pour anything from the top that that stopcock is closed. We want to make sure not to lose this material. This material, the organic acid and the organic neutral compound, that is the same material that we're going to be using for the TLC lab, the uh, recrystallization lab, the IR, NMR lab, and the mixed melting point lab. So if we lose our material today, we won't have that for the subsequent experiments. Okay, the stopcock is closed. Now we can pour our material into the separatory funnel. All right, 
there it is. Our ethyl acetate solution is in the separatory funnel. For our extraction, we're going to use a 5% solution of sodium hydroxide that is aqueous. So this is a well, water um, solution with 5% sodium hydroxide, a strong base. When you prepare this solution, be careful. Sodium hydroxide is extremely um, dangerous to work with. It does cause uh, severe burns on your hands if you're not uh, protected. So uh, be very cautious with this compound right here. We're going to extract three times with 20 milliliters. So for our first extraction, we put 20 milliliters uh, in a graduated cylinder, and then we pour from the top. Good to use our funnel. Okay, so take a look before we do any shaking. It kind of looks uh, interesting in there, lots of lines and uh, clearly a phase boundary uh, right at that position. Okay, so this is going to be our, uh, the beginning of our extraction procedure. We have to get a stopper to cover that top and I'll show you how this works. So definitely use a stopper here. Don't just use your finger or anything else like that. We're gonna take the separatory funnel. Make sure this is nice and tight. You can. Use a finger there, keep a finger there. Keep this um, stop cock closed, stop cock closed. Give a nice shake. You do not have to be extremely vigorous in your shaking. And note something really important. I'm pointing the tip, uh, bottom tip, which is now inverted up here uh, of the separatory funnel up towards the back of the fume hood. In case anything um, were to shoot out of there, during our vent, which we're going to do in a moment, it will go to the back. So as we're doing this, we're, we're generating a little bit of uh, pressure inside the flask, so we want to let it vent. So just open this. You might have heard a little sound. Uh, I heard it. Maybe it didn't reach the microphone. Do a little bit more. Always keeping pressure down here to keep that Stop her in. All right. All right, and carefully invert it. Now notice I did not shake it like this. There's nothing particularly wrong about that, but that's a little bit more dangerous. If you care, if you shake it like this, your pinky and your thumb are sort of holding the bottom of the separatory funnel and it can easily fall out of your hands. If you use two hands like this, it's a lot safer. I'm just going to set this on a paper towel over here. This is the stopper. All right, now we let this sit. You'll see the phases separate. So now I have a question. Which of these phases is the organic layer of ethyl acetate, and which of these phases is water? So which one is ethyl acetate, and which one is water? Well, what uh, which of those two uh, solvents, which of those two liquids has a higher density? Water is more dense than ethyl acetate, so we would expect the water to be down here. But we never want to just make that assumption. You have to be careful. Solutions, when solute is dissolved in the liquid, that changes the density, and sometimes things can be inverted. So in order to be 100% sure, uh, here is a trick to make sure that we're, um, we know exactly where the water is. So here is just a little bit of water. Just put a few drops of water and see if they stay on the top or if the drops fall to the bottom. 
as you can see here, when you add water, drops to the top, they fall right down to the bottom. So that confirms that the bottom layer is water, the top layer is ethyl acetate. Now, think about your organic compounds. One of those is an acid that could be deprotonated. One of those is a neutral compound that will not be deprotonated by the sodium hydroxide. Based on that information, which uh, layer has the neutral compound, which layer has the uh, acidic compound? Think about that. Okay, now we are going to actually do the separation by opening the stopcock and carefully turning it and letting liquid flow out from the bottom. We want to just watch that phase boundary come down all the way down. Until it just reaches the there we go. It just reaches the top of the, the stopcock hole right there. And there we have it. Our first extract, our first uh, extraction has been completed. Now let's talk a little bit about the um, difference between the term extraction and wash. We're going to be doing a wash later in this procedure. And in extraction, we are separating a material that we want. We are taking a material that we are interested in keeping from one solution to another. So in this case, we're taking the acidic component that used to be dissolved in the ethyl acetate and we are extracting it out into the aqueous layer. That's what we're doing here. In a washing procedure, which we will do later, we are removing unwanted materials from our solution. Materials that we're just going to, to get rid of afterwards. Well, that was our first extraction. We have to do three. We're going to do three. The extraction works better when you uh, do multiple times at lower volume rather than just one big extraction with a large volume. So let's do two more extractions. Okay, there we have completed three extractions of ethyl acetate with our sodium hydroxide solution. So that is all here now. The next part of this procedure will be the isolation of the acidic compound. The acidic compound has now been extracted into this beaker. The neutral compound remains up here, dissolved in ethyl acetate. How are we going to get that acidic compound out. Well, if you recall back to the solubility lab, if you take an organic acid, create, treat it with base in order to uh, create the deprotonated form that dissolves in water, you can precipitate that out of solution by using an acid. So here we have 10% hydrochloric acid. If we used 60 milliliters of 5% sodium hydroxide to do this extraction, how much hydrochloric acid do you think we're going to need to precipitate all that material out? Now we are ready to add this acid to the solution. I also have pH paper right here. We'll get a pH paper ready to go. So let's look at what happens when we add acid to this solution. See kind of clouds forming at first. I didn't add that much yet. So let's just see. We don't see any solid formation at this point. We don't see any change. Uh, let's check the pKa to see where we're at. Not pKa, pH. Let's check the pH to see where we're at. Here's a, a pH indicator paper. We do not dip that directly in because that can extract the compounds off of the paper into the solution. We don't want that. So we use a 
glass rod just to get a little bit of liquid to, to wet it. And we can attach that. Just touch the paper. Just touch the paper. And what we're seeing here is that we're getting slightly acidic. That is about P, uh, pH of 6. But it's not quite acidic enough yet. We need to we need to lower the pH of this solution to accomplish the, um, the the precipitation. But we're very close. Can add a little bit more. I bet it's going to happen real fast here. Gently swirl. Okay, it didn't happen quite yet. So there you can see there is some precipitate forming. If I touch the pH paper now, the pH indicator paper is showing a, PK, uh, a pH. This is the new drop, is that drop above here. That's showing a pH somewhere in the four to two range. It's uh, somewhere in that range between four and two. Here you can see the precipitate that has developed. Nice little snow globe effect. We're going to let that just sit here in that ice bath for a little while to let that uh, precipitate, uh, precipitate even more. Now we have to accomplish our, our final task, which will be the isolation of this um, neutral compound. So think about what do we have currently in this solution. We have ethyl acetate as our primary, um, as our solvent. We have our neutral compound uh, in the ethyl acetate dissolved in there. But we also have a little bit of sodium hydroxide that's floating around. We can actually see there's a teeny bit here at the bottom still from the previous uh, extraction procedures that we did. So we need to get rid of that we need to get rid of that uh, extra sodium hydroxide. We don't want that to be around. And that's going to be our washing procedure. So we're going to wash that sodium hydroxide away. Because the sodium hydroxide is water soluble, we can remove that sodium hydroxide with a, um, a wash with water. So this is deionized water in here, uh, 15 milliliters of deionized water. I'm just gonna pour that in the top. Uh, that's a small enough um, uh, beaker. We don't need to use the uh, flask. I don't need to use the funnel for that. All right. So there we have our solution. We have our two-phase mixture again. We're going to shake that. So this uh, the shaking, it's just like an extraction procedure. So... The, the physical operation of an extraction or a wash is the same. Okay. So let those phases separate, give it a little bit of time to fully separate. You never want to start uh, removing the bottom layer 
um, while your separatory funnel looks like that. So you, you don't want to have like this cloudiness in there. Uh, sometimes that cloudiness will remain for a while. It's called an emulsion. Um, hopefully we don't have that happen today. We just give it a little bit of time and everything separates nice and uh, nice and cleanly. You want to definitely don't want to rush that. You want to wait until the phases are completely separated uh, before you drain the bottom. But at this point, we can go ahead and drain the bottom into a 50 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. And now we're going to take this material here, which is the neutral compound dissolved in ethyl acetate, and transfer that to a 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. Now there are different philosophies on the best way to get this out of here. Uh, I would suggest that you pour anything, whenever you have two layers, the bottom layer comes out the bottom, the top layer, I think it's always better to pour it out of the top. Not everyone believes that. Some people say just everything can come out of the bottom, it doesn't matter. But I think if we uh, pour out of the top, that prevents this solution of ethyl acetate um, from running into all these drops. If you look down here, there's all these uh, drops of aqueous um, solution right there, the, the water that we just ran. So it prevents it from mixing with that. We just keep, keep everything, pour it out of the top. And at this point, it would be a good idea to rinse out that Erlenmeyer flask with a little bit more ethyl acetate. So we don't need a lot, but just pour a little bit of ethyl acetate in there. Because our neutral compound, uh, com our neutral compound is still in there. Uh, any ethyl acetate that was remaining on the side of the, the, the separatory funnel is still in there. So we'll give that a shake. Now you see I'm just shaking it like this because I'm not, it's not heavy, it's just a tiny bit of uh, liquid. All right, so just th doing these sort of extra rinses increases our yields. So that keeps, that allows us to get all of our material into the flask. It allows us to transfer everything into the flask. Now we are finished with our separatory funnel. We can set that off to the side. And now we have this ethyl acetate solution and uh, here, just so you can see, that's what ethyl acetate normally looks like. Nice and transparent. This is a little bit cloudy. And that cloudiness is not coming from the solution. Uh, excuse me. It's not coming from the neutral compound that's dissolved. It's not coming from that. That cloudiness is caused by a little bit of water. In order to get rid of that water, we're going to add magnesium sulfate. So this is anhydrous magnesium sulfate. That is a drying agent. So we can scoop out some. We don't have to carefully measure how much we add. Okay, I'm going to start with about that much and just put it in the top. And what we want to see here is the solution become transparent and for those particles to become sort of like a snow globe. We don't want to see um, any of that uh, cloudiness like we saw before. And it looks like we've accomplished that. That was the right amount. If you still see cloudiness, you can add a little bit more magnesium sulfate. But the more magnesium sulfate you add, the more you have to get rid of by filtration later. So it doesn't really benefit you to keep adding more and more and more. So that's enough. We, are, uh, we have now dried the solution. Now we have to get rid of that um, magnesium sulfate. In order to do that, you want to take a new clean uh, funnel so I wouldn't use that funnel because that has water and sodium hydroxide and other stuff in it. So we don't want to use that right now. A nice new clean funnel. You could take, you could just wash that one. And we're going to make a um, fluted filter uh, 
a fluted filter funnel in order to get rid of that magnesium sulfate. Now there are different techniques to creating the perfect fluted uh, filter. This is just a, um, a large piece of filter paper and we're just folding it on itself several times. And there are more sophisticated origami tricks to get a perfect flute. Unfortunately, I don't know them. And I forgot to prepare that <laughs> before this video. So what I like to do is just go around. You see, you get one of these uh, folds like that. And then just go around and correct all of the other folds so that it is back and forth. You have an up and a down fold. Up down and you want this up and down up and down up and down till eventually you make your way around the entire uh, paper Okay, there we have it. Uh, like I said, there are more sophisticated ways to do this, but this is the, the way that I do it because my, my origami skills are not up to the standard. So you're going to set that in here, and then uh, it can just kind of float on top for now. You know, it might, it might stay but it might pop out. That's okay, we're not worried about that. Below the funnel, you wanna put your teared 100 milliliter round bottom flask. Make sure it's on top of a cork ring. You don't want that just floating around, able to like roll anywhere. And make sure that the, the bottom of the funnel is laying nice, uh, it's just resting inside of that um, flask. And this is what's called a gravity filtration. You can do a gravity filtration when you don't really care about your solid. When you want your solution and you don't care about the solid, you do a gravity filtration like this. We can begin by just holding this down. Um, gonna, my arm is in the way. I'll try to do this with my left hand. So you hold that down just a little bit and be careful not to pour this on your finger. Just pour a little bit of the solution into the center that's going to help hold the paper down. Then you can give it a good swirl and pour the, pour the solution right there into the center. The liquid is flowing through the filter paper. All of the solid is remained be, uh, remaining behind in the filter paper. And as you're doing this, you want to rinse this uh, Erlenmeyer flask with a little bit of ethyl acetate because we want to make sure that all of our um, neutral compound is collected. And you see all that magnesium sulfate that remains in the flask, you don't have to get all of that into the filter paper because we don't really care. This is a waste right there, the, the solid. So don't, don't worry about rinsing and rinsing and making sure all of that gets in here. That's unnecessary. What is necessary is that all of the neutral compound gets down there. So we'll give it one more rinse. And with these rinses, you don't want to use a lot of volume. It's, a, it's unnecessary to use that much volume. And um, we're going to end up putting this flask on a rotary evaporator. And when you use the rotary evaporator, you don't want the solvent line to be much more than half, um, half the, the volume of the round bottom flask. If this solvent line gets up too high, it's going to not really be well suited for the rotary evaporator. I think we have enough space in there that we can do one more rinse. I'm just going to rinse the, the paper up here. I 
I could also be using a pasture pipette to more accurately shoot the, the solvent onto the sides and rinse down. Okay. You want to be careful touching the paper because now through capillary action, the entire paper is completely saturated with uh, ethyl acetate. And it's better not to get that on your hands if you can avoid it. So it looks like our final drops have fallen down into the, the round bottom flask. So just grabbing on the sides here, grabbing the glass, trying not to touch. Uh, it's not the end of the world if you get a drop of ethyl acetate on your glove. Um, you can just swap out your glove, but um, better to avoid any unnecessary chemical exposure. And now we have our um, neutral compound in ethyl acetate, water-free, ready to be um, placed on the rotary evaporator to remove the solvent. But I'm going to set that off to the side for now because let's get back to our organic acid. I'll set that over here. So our organic acid has been resting in ice for a little while. You can see a lot more precipitate has fallen out. It's very uh, uh, opaque now, uh, cloudy. Now that precipitate is our organic acid. We actually want to collect the solid in this case. In the previous filtration that we just did, all we want is the liquid. We don't care about the solid. In this case, we don't care about the liquid. We want the solid. In, um, in order to collect solid that we care about, we use a Buchner funnel and we do a vacuum filtration. In order to accomplish the vacuum filtration, you're going to use the filter flask, a Buchner funnel, and a vacuum adapter that you're going to set on the top here arrange the components like this, and you're going to um, use laboratory supplied vacuum. If I turn the camera over here, this uh, yellow um, joint is a, a vacuum adapter, so we can take a hose, stick it on here, and take another hose and stick it on here. That's going to connect our system to vacuum. But it's always a good idea to use a clamp to hold the glassware in place. If you don't use the clamp, the tension that's in this hose, in this tube, can easily cause the system to flip over or flop, flop around, and um, that, can, that can be disastrous. You can have a big spill and lose all of your compound and have a big mess. So we tightly uh, clamp our um, glassware here, our filter flask, in order to secure the system. And then we can attach the vacuum um, tubing. And now we just need to put a uh, filter um, paper in here. It's not ready to filter now. Uh, inside the, the flask are just inside the the funnel are just holes those holes are not small enough to actually accomplish a filtration so we need a, a filter paper which we put in right like that and that filter paper is usually going to have a little bit of um, curvature to it it's probably not going to fit perfectly flush so before we begin we can turn on the vacuum and the vacuum isn't enough to suck down the paper to make it fully firm so it's always a good idea to put a little bit of whatever the liquid is, in this case it's water, put a little bit of that to help flatten down the surface. So right now, you can see that paper is not really flush on the bottom of the Buchner funnel. But if we add a little bit of water, a little bit, and then we turn the vacuum on. Okay, so did you hear that? Did you see what happened there? And now we can just carefully pour on our um, this mixture of the organic acid and water. Before we begin though, you just want to make sure, check the 
rip their vinyl for any sort of defects. If you have any paper that's kind of folded, because we don't want any um, defects, any sort of deficiencies in the paper that can allow the solid to just flow right down through. But it looks good to me. Let's just carefully pour our solution. I shouldn't say solution. I should say suspension of precipitate in water. Okay, if you look there, you can probably see some nice uh, crystals, nice crystalline liquid. Um, you can see there's still a lot of liquid back over here. In this case, we really want to get all of this material onto the, the nuclear funnel. So we're going to be really careful to get all of this. So it's going to take several rinses with deionized water to accomplish that. Okay, so after a few more rinses, this is what um, the, the beaker looks like now. You're going to just see some leftover material on the side of the glass. Unfortunately, we have to just kind of consider that to be lost. And uh, the rest of it is all here as a beautiful, like, glistening um, precipitate. Uh, sometimes the precipitates look like this. Sometimes they look just like powders. But um, there we have it. The last thing we have to do is take this solution right here, which, uh, if you recall, that is our neutral compound in ethyl acetate. And we want to remove the ethyl acetate. So that solvent is now an impurity. We want to get rid of it to get our nice, pure, neutral compound. In order to do that, we have to use the rotary evaporator. Here is the rotary evaporator, or Rotovap for short. It's essentially a sophisticated distillation apparatus. You use the um, rotary evaporator to remove solvent from a compound that you're interested in. When we did the fractional and uh, simple distillation in a previous lab, we were trying to remove um, the liquid. We wanted, we were interested in the distillate. We were trying to collect that distillate. Here, we don't really care about the distillate. We're just trying to get rid of it and leave behind our neutral compound. So we have the solution right here. Here's how you set it up. Currently, there is a chiller. It's down here below, and it's pumping cold ethylene glycol solution uh, with a green dye through the cooling coils. So this is the condenser right here. This is a bump trap. So we're going to be connecting our flask to the end there. Uh, we'll see the purpose of that once the, the, the rotary evaporator begins uh, functioning. This is a warm water bath, and we keep this at a constant temperature, usually 40 degrees. It's set to 40. Right now, that's the standard. Uh, and then we're going to apply vacuum. So I'm going to turn the vacuum on. It's underneath here. You might have heard it turn on. Uh, make sure this is open at the top. And using a Keck clamp, I'm going to connect our flask right there to that joint. Now, you don't want to leave your finger. Uh, you don't want to let your finger leave here. You want to keep your finger on that um, joint until you put this system under vacuum. So um, I'm going to turn the knob here. That's going to, once that whistle sound goes away, it's under vacuum now. And we want to now at this point start turning this knob. And let me zoom in. So here we can see the liquid is inside there. It's rotating in the warm water bath. The vacuum is uh, drawing that ethyl, uh, ethyl acetate up here through the system. It's condensing here in the coils right around there. And then that is dripping down and slowly collecting down here. You can see a little path. There's some condensation on the outside because it's cool little path where the um, distillate, which is ethylene, uh, ethyl acetate, is collecting. So what's the purpose of this bump trap right here? The purpose of this is sometimes that sample is going to boil a little bit too vigorously. And if it boils too vigorously, the ethylene glycol could bump up and bubble. And this is a place where those bubbles and the solution can collect rather than shooting up through the whole system over here. So this is just a safeguard. It's clean, 
if uh, if our sample bumps up into this zone, we can clean that out and recollect our sample. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes since our sample has been uh, subjected to this rotary evaporator. Uh, now we have quite a bit of ethyl acetate over here, and at this point we can we can stop um, we can we can disassemble our rotary evaporator. The first thing we'll do is turn off the rotation, lift up our sample uh, out of the water bath, and then turn off the vacuum. Keep your hand here, you want to be very cautious, keep your hand here uh, as you open up the vacuum. You're going to hear a sound. So that is the sound of the vacuum um, of air coming in to alleviate the vacuum inside of the system. Now at this point, you can take off your Keck clamp and remove your flask. And there we have our sample. It's a nice colorless oil. Now they might, there might still be some trace uh, amounts of ethyl acetate in here. We wanna make sure all that ethyl acetate is gone because in a couple weeks, we're going to be taking the carbon NMR, uh, the carbon 13 NMR and the IR spectra of this compound to try to determine its identity. If it has ethyl acetate in there, those peaks corresponding to that compound are going to appear as a as an impurity in, in our spectra. So in order to get rid of any last bit of ethyl acetate, we will put this on high vacuum. I'm not gonna do that here today, but in your lab, you would put it on high vacuum for 15, and 15 to 20 minutes, um, and then any trace ethyl acetate that remains will be gone. And if you remember that solid that we precipitated out, uh, the organic acid, that's uh, right here. It was taken out of the Buchner funnel. It's a nice disc placed right here uh, in a large filter paper. We're just going to wrap this up and save it until the next class period. So just wrap it up here like that. And we can use a little sticker, wrap it up like a little gift, because that is our gift for the next class period. All right, well that concludes our chemically active extraction lab. Remember that dirty little mix of compounds that we got when we began, that uh, combination of things? Well, we were able, through the use of chemically active extraction, to get an organic acid, which is inside uh, this little package right here, and the organic neutral compound. So we have these two compounds completely separate now. And in the next lab, which is TLC, thin layer chromatography, we're going to explore how well our separation worked. Until next time, this is Derek France. I look forward to seeing you soon.